Welcome to the Starship Enterprise from the television show Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, you might have seen me here before on the bridge as Lieutenant Geordi LaForge, the ship's navigator. But now, let me show you something I'll bet you haven't seen before. None of this ever appears in an episode of the show, but without it, there just wouldn't be a Star Trek The Next Generation. Same is true of everything on TV. What you see on the screen just isn't the whole story. For every character on the Bionic Bunny show, there are many more doing their jobs behind the scenes. It's the same here on Star Trek The Next Generation. Every week you see the captain, Geordi, and the rest of the Enterprise crew. Worf, Counselor Troy, Data, Commander Riker. Together, they keep the ship running at warp speed. But there's another group of people behind the scenes that you never get a chance to see until now. Take the light another six up to this. Right on it. <laughs> the day begins for us in the makeup trailer, where we're transformed into our characters for the show. Some of us change more than others. Well, this was my tomorrow. Turning an actor into a Klingon takes a bit of doing. In fact, it takes two hours every morning to transform my friend Michael into Lieutenant Worf, Chief of Security on the Enterprise. Stand aside, I take large steps. When we get to the set, we go over the script with the director. Everyone contributes ideas to make the scene work. Captain, I'll determine what is my function on the freighter. So you can't build that. You're building it. You're tightening up the air. Start it. You take your best shot. All right. Let's rehearse. Quietly. Rehearsing from the top. Action. Solar flares are. During rehearsal, the director blocks the action for the scene, and we practice it with the dialogue. Here comes Jonathan. Hello, our quarrelsome guests. Waiting for you in the observation lounge, sir. And that takes us to this. A scout ship reported two additional <coughs> planets, one of which was on the verge of acquiring space travel. Ah, that in two centuries, neither civilization... Rehearsal is going well. I find it strange... So the director begins final preparations to shoot the scene. In here, and in anywhere in there, I want to come He directs here. the cameraman to roll the cameras into position. Sound is put in place, and lighting is adjusted. Lose a, lose a single. The actors get ready with a few vital finishing touches. All right, here we go. Places, please. They should still look wet. The crew has done a great job and everything is ready. Now they look to us, the actors, to bring the scene to life. Focus for the camera is measured. Ed, roll please. We wait for the director's cue. Background. Action, LeVar. Solar flares are increasing in magnitude, Captain. The shields are shaky, but they're holding. Maintain. How are our rather quarrelsome guests? We're waiting for you in the observation lounge, sir. Mr. Data, what can you tell us about the inhabitants of this system? Good. It's a cut. The scene is shot from many angles. Now the cameras are rolled into a new position and props are moved out of the way. We're ready to shoot the scene from a different point of view. Jonathan, take your, uh, your position behind Brent for a second. Rolling, please. Back Background. And 
Action. And here's what the cameraman sees through his lens. This is a master shot. That means the major characters for the scene are in the shot. The only recorded contact with the Dalos system was over 200 years ago. A scout ship reported two inhabited planets. One of now the captain's the close up. Mr. Data, what can you tell us about the inhabitants of this system? Now Riker's reaction shot. Action. Not very much, sir. The only recorded contact with the Delos system. And Data's close up. Action. The system was over 200 years ago. And so it goes. Shot after shot after shot. Background. Action. Close-ups, establishing shots, reaction shots, two shots, zooms, pans, wide-angle shots. How do you make a show out of all of this? You take it to an electronic editing house. Solar flares increasing in magnitude, Captain. Shields are shaky. We're here at the Post Group in Hollywood, California, where a lot of the post-production work for Star Trek The Next Generation is done. And this is Rob Legato. He's the show's visual effects supervisor. He's here working with a couple of the guys from the post-production team on some of the scenes we shot the other day. Hiya, Rob. How you doing? Good, good. You're welcome. LeVar, I'd like to introduce you to Fred Romandi and Rich Thorne. This is LeVar Burton. Hi, LeVar. Hiya, Fred. Hiya, Rich. So this looks pretty complicated. What are all these buttons and knobs? Well, actually, everything in the room is a remote control for all the tape machines, which are actually downstairs in the basement, so to speak. Aha. Uh -huh. And what your keyboard there then is... This, is... this is a computer that lets me roll the tape machine to a specific point to make an edit. Well, let's edit some film. Great. Okay. But we were working on scene 42. So Remember we'll scene 42? The one with the solar flares and the ah, people on yes. board and... Ah, uh... yes. That's right. That's right. So what are we doing first? Why don't we cut to the wide shot now? Okay. Solar flare Editing film, or videotape, is like putting together a puzzle. And each shot is a piece of that puzzle. The editor rolls through all of the shots, selects the ones that best tell the story to make a scene. When all of the scenes are put together, we have a show. Solar flare is increasing in magnitude, Captain. Shields are shaky, but they're holding. Maintain. How would I rather quaddle some guests? They're waiting for you in the observation lounge, sir. Data, what information can you give us about the inhabitants of this system? Not very much, sir. But what makes Star Trek Everybody unique happens next. Those amazing special effects. Reported to inhabitants. Rob and his team create these effects in some very surprising ways. So, Rob, where does this process of visual effects start? Well, it starts with the script. They write a scenario and they describe what they think it should be, and then I have to take a look at the script and interpret it and decide what I think it should be. Well, in this scene, the writer says, they enter cautiously. In the center is a shiny black box. It pulsates with a glowing light. Well, after I read that, I decided to make it about 100 feet tall. And this is what you came up with? And this with. is what I came up with. So what we decided to do, since this is uh, in keeping with the rest of the script, everything was octagonally shaped, we decided to make an octagonally shaped model made out of uh, old model parts, pieces from aircraft carriers and tanks and planes and cars. So in, in creating these things, you can use absolutely, absolutely anything. anything. You can make this little tiny object, which is about two feet tall, look like it's 100 feet tall. Now, one of the effects that everybody loves in Star Trek is, is the transporter effect, beaming in and out. How do you do that? Well, first it starts, again, with the script where they describe that might be a sparkly pattern or whatever, and then you have to figure out how to make that sparkly pattern. And one of the ways of doing it is actually take sparkles, like you buy at a hobby shop, and uh, you need to suspend them somehow. You can suspend them with wind or air or whatever, or the easiest way is to suspend them in water. Uh -huh. And simply take uh, regular sparkles and dump them in a water tank and then stir it up, and then start filming it after you've stirred it up, and it looks like... Look at that. 
you can actually see those sparkles in the beam-up effect. Rob, that's amazing. And what's this little guy here? Well, this is a little model we built for a matte painting shot we did. It was a painting of the uh, Enterprise in the space dock. Mm -hmm. And this was going to be a little scout ship. We didn't have much money, so it was built out of spare parts. There's a disposable razor here. Then we added some lights to it. And we shot those in smoke as well, so you have the little beams that come out of it. And we flew that in front of this uh, uh, painting of the Enterprise. And it made it look like it was realistic. You like what you do, don't you? Sure, I enjoy it. It's fun. It's a challenge. Yeah. Well, I bet you're wondering where the real Enterprise is. Well, earlier today, Rob took me to Image G, where the Enterprise lives. So this is it. This is the Enterprise. Rob, how big is it? Six feet. Now, I noticed that the ship is upside down. Why is she upside down? It's upside down so that you can shoot across the bottom of the ship for when it comes overhead. So it's actually just easier to shoot it with it right. upside down. Yep. And, then you... and then you flip the camera upside down and, and it looks like it's it looks right, right side up. up. So the camera is actually moving around. Yeah, the... The way we make the ship look like it's moving is actually not move the ship and leave it stationary so it's all lit correctly. We just move the camera and when you put, a, put it against a star field it appears that the ship is actually flying when it's really not. It's the camera that's doing all the it's, moving. It's the camera that does all the work. Amazing. Now these guys are ready to put the Enterprise into space. This I want to see. So Rob, we've shot the model. Now what? Now we have to take all the pieces that we shot of the model, all the various passes that we call it, and we put it together to make one shot of Aha. Uh -huh. What are you going to lay in next? There's uh, the existing planet. Right. And the stars. And then the next thing we'll do is we would put the Enterprise over that. To actually insert the Enterprise into a shot, it's a little more difficult than just kind of placing the ship into the shot. One of the things we need to do is actually cut a hole in the background. So we use a cookie cutter of sorts, something that looks like this. That's just a shape of the Enterprise. A silhouette. A silhouette. So we start out with this, and what we do is we actually cut a hole in the background. Wow. A shape of the Enterprise. Right. Then if we add the actual Enterprise into that hole, it looks like that. And there's the Enterprise on the shot. Now, can you make that image of the Enterprise move in this picture? Sure. Whoa! What'd you think? That was great. That was great. Listen, thanks, guys. I really learned a lot here. Well, you're welcome. I'll see you later, Roger. Bye-bye. Okay. Right. Let's cut to the ship. Good, you got it. Walking along the miles of corridors that there are on this ship, you begin to understand the power that it takes to keep it running. Let me show you something. This is the engine. This is the energy source that powers the Enterprise as she explores unknown worlds. Pretty impressive, huh? You know, there's something else that can help you explore the universe. Books. They can take you literally anywhere. So if you like the Bionic Bunny show, then here are three that'll take you where you've never gone before. But you don't have to take my word for it. You know, things on the set don't always go, well, perfectly. Captain, the freighter's hold temperature is approaching critical. We're losing the freighter. We have to beam those people out of there now or even sooner, or as soon as I can give the order. That's a cat. <laughs> Captain Toujon, we're not able to attach the... the What's the names? Captain Toujon, we're not able to attach the tractor beams. Can we cut? Captain Toujon, we're not able to... Sorry, gentlemen. Oh! Six seconds. You know, we have a lot of fun, and when we're finished, We've made a show we're really proud of.
You can turn on your TV set and enjoy a story well told by the experts we've met today. Or you can be the expert by picking up a book. When you read a good book, you're the producer, the director, the actor, even the special effects magician. You bring the book to life in your imagination. So, the next time you're looking for some behind-the-scenes adventure, pick up a good book. Wonder Beam down. I'll see you next time. Energize.